Hello, I'm Ross Stevens, a senior mine regulator working for the Department of Energy and Mining, South Australian Government, and a former project manager at Brakunga. Welcome to the former Brakunga Pirate Mine, located in the Adelaide Hills. Today we'll be conducting a virtual aerial tour of the Brakunga Mine from footage taken in August 2022. This site is significant to the Peramac people, who use the pyrite outcrops to make and trade fire building kits with flint. For the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains, Brakunga is significant at Trebrookie's final resting place, an important dreaming story. Many new immigrants and returned servicemen came to South Australia after World War II and opened up new farming areas of the state. South Australian soils are typically poor and require the liberal application of fertiliser. The development of the Brakunga mine was encouraged and sponsored by both the state and Commonwealth governments. The state government encouraged the formation of the mining company, NAN Pyrites Limited, a consortium of three fertiliser manufacturers and BHP. Pyrite and pyrotite was mined at Brakunga for the production of sulphur ore from 1955 to 1972. The Brakunga ore was railed to Port Adelaide, where it was converted to sulfuric acid for the use in the manufacture of superphosphate fertiliser. The mine produced 5.5 million tonnes of iron sulphide ore with an average grade of 11% sulphur, which was crushed and concentrated on site to over 40% sulphur grade. In the late 1960s, cheaper sources of sulphur became available, mainly due to Canada's refining of sour natural gas. The government withdrew a pirate subsidy in May 1972 and the mine ceased mining operations on the same day. Pyrite and pyrotite were quarried from the side of two steep hills, mining three thick bands of mineralised ore striking in a north-south orientation and dipping approximately 80 degrees to the east. The high wall is the western extent of the mine and the north-south orientation of the high wall and the mine benches follow the ore bands. The quarry bench is 1.8 kilometres long with two high walls 70 metres and 85 metres high. Other mine features include two unrehabilitated waste rock dumps immediately east of the mined area with approximately 8 million tonnes combined. These waste rocks have been partially revegetated by hardy species such as pines and eucalypts. The waste dumps are comprised of two main visually distinct areas. The yellow and orange rock are the residual sulphide ores, and the red-purple rock is the non-ore ironstone overburden. Over time, the sulphide minerals in the waste dumps have degraded to jarosite and other secondary minerals. During mining, the concentration of the sulphide ore was, by crushing and grinding, produced a fine sand that produced three and a half million tonnes of tailings. These tails were pumped to the other side of Pyrite Road to fill a shallow valley to create a tailing storage facility. The tailings are 30 metres above the valley floor and cover an area of 28 hectares. The state government took over ownership and management of the Brakunga mine in 1977, five years after mining concluded. The main environmental issue then, as it is now, is the oxidisation of pyrite minerals in air and water to form sulfuric acid, known as acid and metalliferous drainage. AMD occurs through the oxidisation of exposed native sulphitic minerals, which releases sulfuric acid and dissolved heavy metals at Brakunga, specifically al aluminium, cadmium, copper, iron, manganese, nickel and zinc. The sulphide minerals in the waste rock dumps, the TSF, the high wall and the mine benches causes AMD to leach out into the nearby creek, Dawsley Creek. This creek travels north to south between the dumps and the TSF. AMD entering Dawsley Creek carries contaminants downstream, historically to the Mount Barker Creek, the Bremer River, and into Lake Alexandrina. Soon after the mine opened, water from the mine was so contaminated this creek system was unsuitable for livestock and irrigation use up to 55 kilometers downstream. The pH of AMD impacted waters can get as low as 2.4, with the highest concentrations of metals being aluminium and iron. The Brakunga site covers 136 hectares and because of this environmental impact, it is a prescribed activity 
under the South Australian Environmental Protection Act of 1993. It is estimated that this AMD reaction is likely to continue without remediation for 240 years or could continue to be in excess of a thousand years. In September 1980, the State Government commissioned an acid neutralisation plant to treat the AMD water. The main priority at this time was to treat or remove a 10 hectare lake of acid water sitting on top of the TSF. The plant was located immediately north of, north of the TSF to treat this lake. Over time, as the lake was drained, 12 additional pumps were spread around the mine to collect surface and subsurface AMD impacted water. The mine water is pumped to a holding dam that also collects TSF seepage and in turn pumped up to the treatment plant. Treatment requirements are greatly influenced by the seasonal and local rainfall. During the dry summer months, the plant is often shut down for weeks at a time, which allows for essential maintenance. During the wet winter months, the plant is operational 24 hours a day, seven days a week. During persistent wet periods, the plant operates at peak feed of 100 kilolitres an hour for several days or more, as necessary to prevent the holding ponds from overtopping. Despite all the work done from 1980 to 2003 to intercept and treat the acid drainage, only about half of all contaminated water from the site was captured and treated, with the remaining 50%, or approximately 600 tonnes per annum of sulphite, escaping into Dorsley Creek during flood events. The main problem was that fresh water entered Dorsley Creek from the north of the mine, becoming acid and in greater volumes than the collection and treatment system could handle. In 2004, a diversion drain was constructed. This is a pipe and channel system that isolates fresh water flowing into the mine from AMD mine wastes and conveys it safely to the south of the mine. The last stage of this diversion was completed in 2016. This diversion drain had an immediate and sustained improvement on the downstream water quality. Most AMD generated through mine rainfall is now collected and treated outside large flood events. An extensive water monitoring program records the chemical and ecological improvement of the receiving creek water in Dorsley Creek. The planting of vegetation on the Tallings Dam commenced by the government with trials in 1987 and continued for several decades. There was a thin layer of soil spread across the Tallings first once the acid lake had been drained. Thousands of native species of plants were planted from tube stock, often by local school children. The established vegetation has reduced the surface erosion and improved the visual appearance of the TSF and provide habitat to some species, but the main purpose was to create an evapotransportation layer to reduce the deep percolation of rain into the TSF. Moisture is temporarily held in the root zone of plants and there it evaporates or is drawn up into the vegetation. This reduces deep water percolation and minimises the quantity of acid seeping into the toe of the tailings dam and the drawing down the groundwater level which is falling each year. However, the TSF was constructed on a natural spring and is unlikely to fully dry out due to this and substantial winter rainfall in the Adelaide Hills. The water treatment plant has been in continuous operation treating AMD since 1980. The AMD water is mixed with hydrated lime in a series of three mixing tanks using air blowers and providing retention time for the completion of chemical reactions. The treated water is then pumped into a thickener tank. The precipitate gypsum sludge sinks to the bottom and the treated water overflows into a trough around the top of the tank. Sludge from the thickener tank is recycled back into the first reactor tank to raise the pH before any new lime is added. This also increases the final sludge density. The overflow water is clarified in a large lined pond providing time for residual particles to settle before the water is finally returned to the diversion drain and downstream of the mine site. In 2005, a second parallel series of three larger tanks were installed to effectively double the treatment capacity of the plant. The plant was again upgraded several years later to a high density sludge system, which reduced the water content of the waste gypsum product. For many years, the main source of lime used at the plant was an industrial waste product from the manufacture of acetylene gas known as carbide lime. When production of this gas stopped in South Australia in 2008, this was replaced with a commercial hydrated lime product. 
The waste product, gypsum sludge, is pumped to drying dams located to the east of the TSF. When dry over summer, they are carted over to the mine site for storage. In conjunction with the management and treatment of AMD at Brakunga, the state government has also invested considerable effort in determining an effective remediation strategy for the mine site. With the assistance of some leading experts in AMD management, a technical advisory group was formed in 2007 to advise government on remediation options. This resulted in several tests and trials, both geotechnical and geochemical, to determine that if any proposed strategy is implemented, it would be successful. In addition, the Prakunga mine site has many other varied uses over the years of government ownership. Every year, hundreds of school children, university students and other stakeholders visit the mine to learn about AMD, earth and environmental sciences. The site has also been home to two Prakunga drilling research and training facilities. The former mine buildings have been converted and expanded into the Country Fire Services State Training Centre adjacent to the mine. The mine is also the setting for a number of feature films, miniseries and commercials, including Wolf Creek, Cargo and The Flipside. On behalf of all staff, contractors and experts who have worked at Prakunga over the years, I thank you for joining me on this tour of the Prakunga mine site. <laughs>